Hey everybody, this is Hale. Welcome to the Sanctum. So today we're going to talk about the Fairy Forest Oracle um, by Lucy Cavendish. And the artwork's by Maxine Gad. It's a Blue Angel deck. And I haven't, I've had this deck for two days. By the way, I love this box. Look at the design work on it on the sides. And it's so nice and pretty. I love this look. Now, it's funny because I put off getting this deck. I didn't think I wanted it first. I um, wasn't sure it was a deck that called to me. Then I saw a reading, a uh, pick a card reading. <laughs> and when I saw the pick a card reading using this deck, there were a couple of cards that, a couple of cards that suddenly said, Hi, did you notice me? And I said, where would that that's from? Then realized it was this deck and I said, obviously I was wrong and I did want the deck so I moved it from like lower in my list to higher in my list and grabbed it when it was on sale. So this book is a little bit thinner but it is bigger so basically you got a little bit more room to write with. Um, the nice thing is it is black and white but it talks about working with the oracle. Um, Reading the message, the path to knowledge, resisting the message, bonding with the beings of the fairy forest, the unique qualities of the deck, um, and how to bless your deck, dedicating it. And then they talk about the different spreads and layouts you can use. The Celtic Cross, um, the Cycles of the Moon spread, which actually is really a great spread to use overall. Um, the fairy forest tree spread and then they talk about the cards and the cards are in black and white in the book um, but they actually talk about the information now it's funny is the information for each artwork work is by a different um, person uh, like the elf queen when it talks about the artwork um, it's like Elfines, they have different definitions. Isa, Snow, which Isa is, is actually, uh, if you know the runes, that's the rune for Snow. Um, so it tells you what the artwork name is called and for each one. Elf Struck is the fairy ball. So I wanted to show you some of the cards because these cards are so striking. I mean, like, like, striking to the point of oh my god um i have favorites already but they are all beautiful and mesmerizing so you have vulva the fairy godmother which i think i'm in love with um because it's so unique and i don't do spiders which is really kind of crazy the ancient i love it it's a hobgoblin look i, lo I love that look um <laughs> ragnarok The shapeshifter, the weaver, the wild hunt. This is probably one of my all-time favorite pictures right there. Um, that, yeah, that brings back memories. Um, the golden unicorn, and the merciful one, also a favorite. She who laughs, also a favorite. The Unseelie Queen. Oh yeah, yeah. Can we say right there at this point? I'd be like, hi, I know her, thanks, goodbye. Uh, <laughs> the Maybon, this picture. Can I keep this picture? I want. I would love to have this as a painting on my wall. Right here, this one, forever and ever, amen. Um, the Life Bringer. The Wizard. The Yule Singer, Awen, Knowledge, The Awakening, King of the Darkwood Elves, The Hedge Witch, this is beautiful, The Fairy Norn, I love that too, by the way. The Cunning Woman. The Elven Touch. Aethling, which I like. It's gorgeous. 
the blood month. Queen of the Darkwood Elms. The Dream Map. Sulkin. The Green Man. Which I love that picture. It's such a good picture. The Oath. Look at that picture. <laughs> oh. Before the Gathering. Which is fantastic. Bliss. Astral. The Solitary. The Sigil Keeper. The Green Witch. Salu. Dor. Frere. This picture right here. I, I want as a painting on my wall. I want that just poop right. Yep. Just do it, do it, do it. The Elf Queen. Elf Struck. Need it. Frigga. The Trickster. I love it. There's so many cards in here that I just, I, I mean, seriously, like, I'm in love with. And by the way, these cards are really sturdy. Um, I love rock, I love Blue Angel and Rock Pools cards so much. The Initiate. That they are wonderful. The Sorceress. Otherworld. This is an outstanding, gorgeous picture. Um, reminds me of Silver. And Issa. Which I absolutely love. I would love that picture. So, that's the whole deck. I don't rarely show you the whole deck, so but I, this one is more than worth it. So I'm gonna move this back a little bit. Now, because these are these are a little bit oversized, they are a little bit harder to shuffle, but they are shuffleable when it comes to the full shuffling. <laughs> You can do it the way I do it normally. Um, a friend of mine has a tendency to side shuffle like this, and then she ripples them in. I was like, okay. And then there's other people who do what's called a side riffle, which is that they do it this way. Also doable. So we're gonna do a reading for this deck. Um, basically, we're gonna ask the Faye to grant us knowledge of what they want us to know for the upcoming season. Now you probably have heard rumors and stories about leaving milk out for the fey cream, um, food like bread, honey. Um, and it's true. Um, if you leave out small treats for the fey, they will do they are usually very beneficial for you. If you do not, then they are, they can be quite mischievous. Um, I do leave out. I have been lucky in my life to have grown up with um, Fae teachings, um, the Fae lore. Um, so I always grew up around the Fae. So to me, um, growing up with the Fae has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. Um, both about the mischievous ones and the good ones. They come in all shapes and sizes. Um, not just tiny itty bitty ones. They can bite the heck out of your finger and basically kill you <laughs> to the tall ones that are about the size of man. Um, so people will call them fairy. Some call them Fae. I usually have always called them Fae because that is what I was taught. Occasionally I will call them Fairy. Um, I usually refrain from that and, and the reason is is because growing up I have heard a lot of people use that term in a very negative connotation in regards to um, the LGBT community. Um, 
and so I tend not to use it among the Fae. Um, not because it's not appropriate, but because I don't ever want anybody in that community to ever feel that they are ever being referred to in a negative manner. Um, and it just irks me that people have taken such a secret name and abused it in such a manner. Uh, part of me talks about, you know, wanting to reclaim it for the Fae itself. The other part of me is of the idea of that I would like to beat the crap out of the people who did malign the, the definition of it. So we're going to ask the Fae what they want us to know because, oh, hello card. Um, the reason why, oh hi, what do you, oh you have a toy. Shanko, really? Are you coming into this already? You couldn't leave crap alone? Um, because of the fact that we're going into springtime, and springtime is actually a really good time for the Fae, we're going to draw a couple of cards. And then we're going to have these two. Perfect. And I love these backs of these cards being like the entrance to the Fae, to the, the Fairy Mounds. So let's put these here. And we're gonna talk about the cards. So the first one says the cunning woman here. And it says silent, observant, wily. So what we're looking at here is that for the coming time frame we're looking at, um, right now at the time of year that I'm that I'm in here at the in North America, it is getting ready to go to springtime. Where I personally live, it's already been springtime because we don't have winter and snow. Um, we do get cold weather, like it's been to the thirties occasionally, but we're getting ready to basically things are happening here. Things are actually causing me to be more silent, more observant, more, more careful and not necessarily snotty because I'm not really a snotty person at work. I'm more of the, um, hey, by the way, guys, did you notice X, Y, and Z uh, type? And the reason is, is because there are things that are going on at work that um, are updating and we're doing new projects with new uh, programs. And these programs are not necessarily doing everything they said they would, but had been pre-tested by others and come to find out that they did workarounds and didn't actually um, do the testing like they said they would or did. So it's kind of a momentary like I have to be careful in how I word certain things because of that choice. So this is what we're look, talking about. Right now we're coming into a pre period of time for you that we're looking at you are being smart. You are being silent and observant. You're noticing things and patterns that Maybe you're realizing that things that should be are not quite what they're supposed to be. And instead of coming straight out and saying, look, this is fucked. <laughs> you're being more like beat around the bush type and kind of helping people draw the conclusion that you've already drawn. But you're doing it in such a way that they're going, oh my God, da 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 da. And you're like, eh, oh my God, you're right. Even though you've brought them to this conclusion by giving them certain pieces of evidence and leading them there, they're kind of explaining it to a point where they think that they're doing it in a way, but these are people who actually have the ability and the, um, they have the ability to do so on their own, um, to do something about it, and you don't. You don't have necessarily the, um, the final say so on stuff. And so by being this cunning woman, you are able to make this change by facilitating it in different ways. 
So this is actually a good thing for you. You are learning to not necessarily manipulate the system, but use the system in a radically new and better way to help others, which is part and parcel of who you are as a Fae, um, within the heart of the Fae. It's like they say the Fae cannot lie directly, but they can lie in indirect ways like you can't believe, baby. The Maybon. Shiny hope for the future. Now, Maybon is a time during when during the fall. Um, the story of Maybon is actually quite interesting. Now, with it being the hope of the future um, and being the shiny hope, Maybon itself, as in regards to this, is also a time um, when you reg when we regard as the coming of what happens. It is when things are the darkest before the dawn, kind of thing. We want a positive future. We want a positive light. If you've ever read the story of the Holly King and the Oak King, Maybon, the Maybon is that child born during the darkest of the dark times to bring the positive light forward. He is the Oak King at birth. When spring will come again. So this is the hope. The idea that things are going to get better, that with hard work and the discipline that we have, we have a better future. Uh, the things that you're doing right now are making for that better future. Um, even though you feel like the Elf Queen, that you have a lot of responsibility, a lot of burdens, you may feel kind of introverted. I mean, most of us do on some level. <laughs> You've been working harder than before to try to make things better because you feel responsible for stuff. Whether it be you have things that... Are you underneath the table? Hi, why are you hiding? I see you. I see you, puppy. You. With the face. Um, you realize that your responsibilities as a queen of sorts, as the... the things that you do, the people you take care of, whether it be at home or at work, that you have a responsibility to make things better. So there are things that you have to be a little more wily on. You have to show a bit more hope, a little bit more trust. But you also realize that in order for you to take care of that, you have to deal with Isa. Isa is all about stillness. It's about pausing, being delicate, keeping a balance for you. It's about the fact of of knowing and balancing your inner consciousness. Understanding of where you have been and where you want to go. Because you are in the present and you want to be and you get at this deepest understanding of what you want, what you value, and what you desire. It is a moment of just being completely present in the moment. It's like when the world holds its breath and inhales. And then exhales and it feels like the world has come alive again. That is Isa. That moment after the inhalation when it holds that is where you're wanting to be at right now. That pause before you become moving. Leaving, not, you're not leaving your burden behind, but you're looking at it in perspective. You're looking at the hope of the future. You're using your abilities to get to that moment. Now, we're going to also use the power of Frigga. Being ready. We're going to be looking at the idea of bounty and plenty because we know that's what's ahead. We know that that's the thing that we're going to be looking for. And <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I love it because we're doing the circle of the year. All right. And we have the Yule Singer. Now the Yule Singer is all about rebirth. It's about joy. It's about um, basically it's about abundance feasting it's about this time frame so you're looking at truly look at this i mean if you look at this in terms of 
of times of the year, okay? And you're looking totally at just the coloring. Okay. And I mean, we're looking totally at the times of the year here. This is what we're looking at. Burton. Springtime. Feeling like, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? Moving into the fall. Being cunning and wild. Knowing that we have lots of stuff. We're we are ready to move for action. We're having this beauty. We've got plenty to work with. We're going, we have, we know rebirth is coming. We're feasting. We're joyful about it because we have hope. We know things are getting ready to change. And in that breath of pause of the moment, it happens. Wow. Look at that. From spring through fall through winter. Wow. That's amazing. That's a beautiful reading. That's gorgeous. Even Shingo likes it. Hi, puppy. Hi. Come here. Hi. I love you. Hi, my puppy. You gonna eat your food or what? Or am I gonna have to beat on you? Beat on me, mommy. Beat on me like you. Like I can't grow anymore. I'll go. I'm the puppy that I am. So, this is the reading for the Fae. The Fae, the Fairy Forest by Lucy Cavendish. It is a seven out of seven when it comes to chakras. It is something that I will be honest. It is going to probably end up being a private deck. Uh, I will use for readings. It'll be a deck that I use for myself. Um, you might see and pick cards, um, but definitely this is a me deck. Um, it calls to me. I love these pictures like nobody else's business. So definitely, um, I would highly recommend this deck for you. Um, if you are a fan of the Fae, if you want to work with the Fae, um, I might do a couple of uh, videos about it. And we'll talk a little bit more about it but definitely don't deny yourself a chance to have this opportunity to work with them they are not hard to work with but they're not easy um, to work with but definitely this deck is amazing amazing um, so my best wishes until next time